Hi guys, so by now you would have heard of the lava stream reaching the ocean over in Hawaii coming from Kilauea and that producing a plume of um, haze, which they call lays, um, basically a plume of hydro hydrochloric acid and fine particles which is created when super hot lava hits the ocean or hits cooler seawater. Um, obviously a health risk for the people in the vicinity, um, recommendations are to stay away from it it can change directions depending on which way the wind's blowing, so be aware of that. Um, already one person's been injured by lava, a lava bomb, um, and obviously I think, why take the risk? You know, it might be cool and fun to, you know, play golf in front of an erupting volcano, but the simple fact is you don't know how bad it's going to get. So the recommendation is to move away um, and just wait. If it calms down, then you can move back, but... You know, you don't want to be around if it gets any worse, which is what I personally think and what some of the experts and scientists are suggesting, that this isn't over, there's more to come. And obviously you guys know what I think about this, the potential scenario coming out of this volcano in connection with earthquakes and tsunamis, um, but we'll see. The 22nd is coming up very soon, it's the 21st over here at the moment at 10.35 in the evening, so not long to go until the 22nd and obviously... There is a long way to go if you're counting all the time zones in the world. So I'm just going to wait. Obviously, the 23rd is also something that has that I've mentioned and has been mentioned as well. So, you know, we're not going to just forget it after the 22nd. There's at least that one more day to go, which is the 23rd. But indications are that we should see some sort of indications activity if this thing is going to happen um, around the 22nd. Um, not going to go over all the reasons why I think that, but there you go. Um, in connection with volcanoes and another possible eruption that may be on the cards, um, Yellowstone. The steamboat geyser at Yellowstone has erupted for the sixth time this year. So forget about 2014 where it, it erupted four times um, and that was matched by the volcano um, or by the geyser a couple of weeks ago. Now we're on the sixth one. Um, so it's setting trends the last time it erupted um was on march the 15th and then on april the 19th april the 27th may the 4th and may the 13th um and then it erupted again for the sixth time on may the 20th so it's picking up speed in terms of letting off steam um if that's an indication that the volcano is you know just letting off steam like it normally does and it's going to settle back down then that's a good thing. But, you know, considering the earthquake activity that's been going on um, in Mexico, for example, today, the 5.3, I think it was, that hit Mexico, um, and the activity that's going on along the California coast as well, in terms of active, okay, um, active earthquakes, and then you've got Kilauea, not too far away, um, erupting and generating earthquakes there. It's possible all these earthquakes could be affecting Yellowstone, because obviously everything's connected. That's how it is. So Yellowstone is, you know, showing some signs of earthquakes, small ones. But again, those small earthquakes indicate magma, move, magma movement below the ground. <clears throat> and um, obviously, then you've got more obvious signs like um, geysers erupting multiple times, which is unusual for this particular geyser, the largest one. So on, it's on its sixth one now. Let's see if it goes on to number seven, um, but definitely something to watch for. Um, it's something I really watch for because it's only in the last maybe year and a half or maybe even in the last year, like 12 months, that organisations like NASA have been saying things like drill into the volcano and pump it with water to cool it down and stop it from erupting. Why? Why now? The volcano's been around for a long time. It's been studied for a long time there's been activity at the volcano before. So why now are you presenting a suggestion? It's almost like a panic suggestion to cool this volcano down. So those are the kind of things I pay attention to. And then when you've got other reports like the US having contracts um, with other countries to house displaced Americans in the event of Yellowstone erupting, uh, as I said, it could be an abundance of precaution, um, but the contracts are due to expire within the next five years. If it was an abundance of precaution, you know, 
maybe you'd seek to make that a little bit longer. Some sort of on a, I, I don't know how long they've had it in place, but you know, I'll definitely be considering like it's a 50 year plan, something like that, because um, it could erupt any time. But then again, if you know that something's going to happen within the next five years, you know, possibly within this year, then it could make sense why it expires. Um, but that's just something. That's just something that's going to have to we wait and see. Arizona is preparing for a statewide drill to practice how it would respond to a migration of 400,000 people in case of a catastrophic California earthquake. I wonder how catastrophic, magnitude 9 or above? That would fall into the scenario that we've been talking about. Government agencies, businesses and other organisations in Arizona plan to participate in an exercise to practice how the state would respond to a migration of 400,000 people in case of an earthquake. The exercise will be a drill in a case a catastrophic earthquake occurs in Southern California. The Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs said participants in the National Mass Care Exercise in the coming week will take part in the drill. They will tackle how to organise oper operations such as providing food, shelter and medical services. The department added that the exercise planning has been underway for nearly a year. The State, the, uh, st the state Emergency Operations Centre in Phoenix along with many county, tribal and municipal emergency operation centres will activate during the exercise. And obviously, this is Arizona Phoenix, the Phoenix rising out of the ashes. That's their their motto. That's the symbol that they have on the Economist magazine with the, the new currency um, also on the cover, new currency in 2018. So it's, again, interesting. You know, we're looking, obviously, the... The big one in terms of California has been talked about for a number of years, but you know this year we're looking at a, a, a calamity, a, a mixture of events that are going to combine together to create the combined disasters. And um, obviously, following from that, there's other combined disasters, but that's more military uh, associated with military conflict. Israel, Iran already they had the little clashes this year. The Iran deal has been cancelled, so. There's a lot of potential for things to kick off there. North Korea, you know, one minute they're denuclearizing and having peace talks. The next minute they're, you know, flipping flipping it around and saying they're going to cancel this, they're going to cancel that. And who knows what that leads to. Obviously, May 23rd, they're supposed to shut down this nuclear site. Indications are that they may follow through with that. But at the same time, they may not, depending on what happens in the next coming days. And we know how things can change from day to day, um, particularly in relation to Donald Trump. One tweet can change things all, uh, or can change everything. So we've got a lot to watch for. Some of the things may happen, some of the things may not. Um, you know, God only knows that I don't want any of these things to happen because it would just be fulfilling part of their plan. At the same time, as I said before, all plans are part of God's plan. So God is the ultimate, the ultimate master of plans, and everybody else's plans are included in His plan. Um, and whatever happens is always going to be what he put in place. So in that sense, I don't worry. But at the same time, you know, I don't want people to be caught unawares, um, particularly if they're not ready to go. And just in the last part of this video, in relation to not being ready to go, I just wanted to quickly talk about the rapture because some people, I think, have a, a misconception in relation to the rapture, like, the body, the clothes, everything is just going to disappear in front of people's faces and there's going to be missing people um, like that. The rapture, I don't believe it's like that. The rapture is of the soul. So if, if there's any rapturing to do, it will be of the soul. The body will be left behind. So essentially, it's thousands of deaths taking place at the same time. That's the rapture. So you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and God bless.